everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the French horn. Here we go. So, first things first. You are a French horn player, so the, one of the most important traits about being a French horn player is your posture. So when you're sitting, you should have your back off the back of the chair, kind of skewed towards the front. One foot should be slightly in front of the other. I recommend your left foot. And you should sit very straight and narrow in your chair. Shoulders back, not like Superman chest, because that creates a lot of tension, but just a nice relaxed shoulders back sitting in your chair. Now, we're gonna talk about how to hold the instrument. So, first of all, you're gonna need a French horn. Lucky for you, I happen to have one right here. So, holding the French horn can seem kind of complicated. So, first things first, you're going to put your pinky inside this little ring on the side of the French horn. I'll scoot closer so you can see. And you put your thumb right here on the other one. This will help you support where to hold your hand. And then one, two, three, each of your fingers stay on the spatulas. You never wanna take your fingers off the spatulas because that can create some problems further down the road. Next, we're gonna talk about our right hand, which can be the scariest part of the French horn. So what you're gonna do is hold your hand out like you're trying to cup water. You wanna make sure that you're not tensing up too much, but you're holding your hand where none of the water will spill out. Then you flip it over like you're kind of a, like a butler in a restroom holding a towel like this. And you put your hand on the inside of the French horn right up against the back here. And you want it to be kind of like a hinge so that you can move your hand down for, to stop all the air if you want to. But it'll be like a hinge. And now, the debate of where to put the horn on your leg. There are some people who say that you should start your French horns with the horn sitting on the leg so that they don't have to worry about holding the instrument. This can make it a lot easier for them to produce a very strong and firm airstream, but as soon as possible, I think that you should get the horn off the leg so they can start to support it with their arms. And this just builds upper arm strength, and that's all we're really trying. Now, for this next step, you wanna put your French horn away. We don't really need it right now and you wanna grab your mouthpiece. But before we use the mouthpiece, let's talk about how to buzz our lips. So what you wanna do is firm the corners of your mouth, like you're kind of pinching it uh, in a drawstring bag. But again, you never wanna to have too much tension. So relax your face, pinch the corners of your mouth, and then you wanna blow a steady, short stream of air through the center of your lips, like this. Now that we can buzz our lips, we can actually buzz with the mouthpiece. So what you want to do is be able to be able to buzz your lips, then slowly apply the mouthpiece while you're buzzing, like this. transition our buzzing from our lips to the mouthpiece. I think it's very important to do this so that you do not, uh, so you're able to see what's going on with your mouth before you put the mouthpiece on and then not change anything. There are some students that will, as soon as you put the mouthpiece on their mouth, change something about their embouchure, but you want it to be exactly the same as when you started to buzz without your mouthpiece. Now we can talk about articulation. Um, a very common problem with articulation is that students think that they need to use their throat. No. So you can stop all of the air with the tongue while you're buzzing. It'll sound something like this. A very common problem is that some students will, because you can't see inside their mouth while they're playing, uh, articulate their tongue between their teeth that's incorrect. You want to do it towards the top of your mouth and you want to make sure that your tongue is moving at an up and down motion and not an in and out motion. 
that can create some really, really bad problems down the road that we want to avoid right now. So, we talked about how to sit in our chair and how to buzz with our lips. We should talk about breathing. So with breathing, you want to breathe from your diaphragm. That's a muscle in the lower part of your stomach. And so when you're breathing, you're going to be able to actually feel your stomach expand and contract. A common problem that some students will have is they will raise their shoulders and breathe from their shoulders. This is called clavicle breathing when you go like this. But when we actually breathe, or for example, when dogs breathe, they breathe and move their stomach. So we want to breathe just like dogs. And all of the air comes from your diaphragm and your stomach actually moves while you breathe. So, all right, everybody, that's about all the time that we have today. Remember, French horns are cool and don't forget to empty your spit. This has been Miss Hill on the French horn.